the Large Hadron Collider is currently switched off for maintenance, which means we're allowed to travel 100 metres underground to see the world's biggest science experiment up close. CERN is a European organisation for nuclear research. It straddles the French-Swiss border near Geneva in Switzerland. It was established in 1954, just after World War II. This was as a way of reuniting countries after the devastating impact of the war. This enabled for scientists and engineers from different countries to work together, to work towards common scientific and technological goals in particle physics. So this is the experiment as we approach it from one end. The whole cavern is about 45 or 50 metres long. For 18 years, particles have been colliding inside these tunnels at nearly the speed of light to recreate the moments just after the Big Bang. We basically take photographs of collisions of very high energy particles, 40 million pictures a second, We're trying to understand how nature works at the most fundamental level. They discovered the Higgs boson, a particle which explains how things get mass. But to go further, they want to build bigger, much bigger. At nearly 100 kilometres in circumference, the future Circular Collider, or FCC, would be three times the size of the current ring and twice as deep. How much is this going to cost and how are you going to persuade governments to pay that? So the FCC will cost 15 billion Swiss francs. That's 13 billion pounds. It's a spread over 15 years and it's shared between the 24 member states of CERN and other international partners. This is Mark Thompson, recently elected as CERN's next boss. To convince the government, I think there are many arguments. One is the science, but then there's the wider economic impact of working right at the forefront of science and technology that will then filter down into the economy. That happened with the internet, which was invented at CERN, as was cloud computing. But there is a more pressing driver for this decision, China. The government there is considering plans to build a giant collider of its own. We really have to stay at that forefront because it is one of the few, say very few areas where we have the lead in Europe compared to other, other parts of the world. Whilst they wait for a decision, the current collider will undergo a four year upgrade, including advanced parts manufactured in the UK. So all the parts from all over the world, they come here to CERN. A collection of super cooled magnets and super cool science should help physicists collect 10 times as much data. The chance of a head-on proton-proton collision is the same precision as firing two needles from opposite sides of the Atlantic and you want them to collide in the middle. So what this new piece of kit does is that we are able to rotate the two beams um, so that when they collide in the detector, you increase the chance of a head-on collision. Upgrades should tip the needle in Europe's favour for the next decade at least. But to keep this continent as the centre of particle science excellence long term won't come cheap. Martin Stu News at 10, Geneva. So this prepares it for injection into the Large Hadron Collider, the largest particle accelerator in the world. It's 27 kilometres in circumference, which is about the same size as the circle line of the London Underground. This accelerates the particles to nearly the speed of light and we smash them together using detectors to tell us what has happened after these collisions have taken place. Have we produced particles that we've already seen before but we'd like to learn more about them or have we produced completely new particles that we haven't seen? So that brings me to the CMS detector. The CMS detector, or compact muon solenoid detector, lies 100 metres below the village of Sisi in France. It's one of two what we call general purpose detectors, like Atlas. General purpose means that we use it to study a range of different physics phenomena. But how did it get its name? Compact, because it contains a lot of material for its size. I'll explain a bit more about that later. Muon, because it can accurately detect the muon particle, a type of elementary particle. And solenoid, because it contains the largest and most powerful solenoidal magnet ever manufactured. 
So there are nearly 6,000 people that are a member of the CMS collaboration. Now, this is a mixture of different people from physicists, engineers, technicians. We also have students and administrative support staff. Now, this is a truly global endeavor. There are nearly uh, 250 institutes that are a member of the CMS collaboration from nearly 60 different countries, all collaborating and working together. Some of those are based at CERN, near Geneva in Switzerland, whereas others are working for different universities and research organizations around the world. But what is in store for the future? So we've come a long way with the standard model, but it is far from complete. For example, you may remember with my tennis ball, I talked about the force of gravity. We haven't observed a particle that transports the force of gravity. For example, the graviton is one that has been proposed, but we haven't observed it in the detector. So there are searches ongoing to see if we can find a particle that can transport the force of gravity. Additionally, the standard model only accounts for 5% of the universe. The remaining 95% is dark matter and dark energy. Now, dark matter is important because if we have spiral galaxies in the universe, if we study the rotation of those galaxies, the outermost regions spin faster compared to the amount of matter that it contains. So therefore, there must be some extra matter to describe this behavior. And this is in the form of dark matter. So we haven't found a particle that can explain this. There are some proposals, for example, WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles, but we are still searching for particles to transport dark matter, dark energy. So the LHC will be improved and upgraded as part of the high luminosity LHC project. So the way the LHC works is since 2008, when it started operation, it goes through periods of where it's running, it's taking data, and there have been three run periods. So we're currently in run three. In between those, there are what we call um, long shutdowns. So this is when the detector is completely shut down and we perform maintenance work and upgrade work. So this current run period is expected to last till 2025, and then there will be the high luminosity LHC installation. This is to improve, um, to increase the energy at which we collide the particles together so that the next run period, run four from 2029, we can collide them at 14 tera electron volts. So how does this affect the CMS detector? There are various upgrades that will take place. For example, the trigger system that looks through the data and tells us what's interesting and what's not and discards the rest, that will need to be upgraded, updated because there will be an increased rate at which data is produced. We'll also completely replace the calorimeter regions, the electromagnetic calorimeter and hadronic calorimeter with a completely new calorimeter, the high granularity calorimeter. We'll also upgrade the electronics in the muon systems. We'll have a new tracker system because when we collide particles at higher energy, that means the radiation levels are higher. Now, this is completely safe for people. It's 100 meters below the ground, but this does mean that the electronics and components used need to be replacing to be able to survive that high radiation environment. There will also be a completely new detector, the minimum ionizing particles timing detector to detect when particles arrive more precisely. But what happens after 2040? Now, there are different proposals, one of which is a future circular collider. Now, you might remember I was talking about the CERN accelerator complex as the protons speed up and speed up until they enter the Large Hadron Collider. There has been a proposal to add on an extra machine onto the end of that complex called the Future Circular Collider or the FCC for short. Now, the LHC is 27 kilometers in circumference, the largest particle accelerator in the world. The FCC is proposed to be 100 kilometers in circumference and will reach collision energies of 100 tera electron volts. So why do we need bigger machines? 
Well, by having bigger machines, we can smash particles together at higher energies, and this can unlock areas of physics that we haven't been able to study using the Large Hadron Collider. Another alternative is the muon collider. Now, when a charged particle is accelerated in a ring, it emits what we call synchrotron radiation. It loses energy because of this. Now, with the muon, if we compare it to an electron, the muon is over 200 times heavier. Because it is heavier, it loses 2 billion times less synchrotron radiation. So that's what motivates us to build in a muon collider. Additionally, a muon is an elementary particle, so we might be able to reach higher collision energies. For example, a 10 tera electron volt muon collider might reach the same energies as a um, 100 tera electron volt um, proton collider. So there are different proposals of what comes after the LHC.